Hello and thank you for tuning into News Today where we break down the day's top stories with precision and clarity. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. The Supreme Court has expressed concern about states approaching court over fund dispersal by the center. Reserve Bank of India imposes restrictions on several urban cooperative banks. India adds record 18 gigawatts renewable energy capacity in financial year 2024. Gujarat High Court saw details on regulations around crowdfunding. Space weather behind unprecedented loss of 38 Starlink satellites, says study by Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Kolkata. Study says acidification may strip Indian soil of 3.3 billion tons of essential carbon. Let us start with the first news for the day. The Supreme Court has expressed concern about states approaching court over fund dispersal by the center. Recently, Karnataka approached the Supreme Court to seek relief against center in matters related to release of the financial assistance from National Disaster Response Fund for drought management. Earlier, Tamil Nadu also approached the Supreme Court for non-dispersal of funds by center under NDRF to deal with calamities of Cyclone Michong and unprecedented floods. This trend highlights the growing fiscal challenges faced by the states and their increasing reliance on the centre for support. Delving deeper into the issue, the current status of state finances paints a concerning picture. States are only able to finance 58% of their revenue expenditure from their own revenue sources and the overall debt-GDP ratio of states stands at a high 27.5% as of March 2023. Interestingly, the constitution provides several provisions that enable the union and states to address these fiscal concerns. Article 275 empowers the parliament to provide grants and aid that are charged on Consolidated Fund of India to certain states, while Article 282 allows the union and states to make discretionary grants for any public purpose. Furthermore, Article 293 confers the power on states to borrow money within the limits prescribed by the state's legislature. This heavy dependence on the Centre for Financial Assistance can be attributed to several factors, including the end of the GST compensation in June 2022, and the revenue collected under SGST is lower than revenue from taxes subsumed under GST. Furthermore, the increased use of cesses and surcharges by the Centre and the strain on state finances due to measures like farm loan waivers. To address these challenges, the government has introduced some measures, such as the Scheme for Special Assistance to States for Capital Expenditure, which provides 50-year interest-free loans to states. Additionally, the 15th Finance Commission has recommended a performance-based additional borrowing space of 0.50% of state GDPs to states in the power sector. However, the road ahead is not without its challenges. The Supreme Court's expression of concerns over states approaching the court for fund dispersal by the centre highlights the need for a more collaborative and transparent approach to fiscal federalism. The way forward lies in fostering business-friendly tax administration to strengthen state revenue collection as well as revising user charges on public services to boost non-tax revenue. As India continues to navigate the intricate web of fiscal federalism, the Supreme Court's role as the guardian of the constitution will be crucial in ensuring a balanced and equitable distribution of resources between the centre and the states. This delicate balance is essential for the overall development and progress of the nation. Moving on to our next news, RBI imposes restrictions on several urban cooperative banks. The RBI has capped the withdrawal limit for the National Urban Cooperative Bank Limited and Sarvodaya Cooperative Bank. However, the eligible depositors of these banks will be entitled to receive a deposit insurance claim of up to Rs 5 lakh from the Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation or DICGC. The DICGC was established under the DICGC Act of 1961 and ensures coverage for all commercial banks, including branches of foreign banks operating in India, local area banks, and regional rural banks. Urban Cooperative Banks, or UCBs, refer to primary cooperative banks located in urban and semi-urban areas. These banks are registered as cooperative societies under either the respective State Cooperative Societies Act or the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act of 2002. RBI's regulatory framework categorizes UCBs into four tiers based on the deposit size. The tiers are as follows. Tier 1 – All unit UCBs and salary earner UCBs irrespective of deposit size and all other UCBs having deposits of up to Rs 100 crore. 
Tier 2, UCVs with deposits more than Rs 100 crore and up to Rs 1000 crore. Tier 3, UCBs with deposits more than Rs 1000 crore and up to Rs 10,000 crore. Tier 4, UCBs with deposits more than Rs 10,000 crore. Furthermore, these banks have faced several issues including an inadequate capital base and low capital adequacy ratios, high gross non-performing asset ratio of 8.7% in UCBs, lack of uniformity in regulation and the influence of political interests in their management. To address these challenges, the government has taken several steps, such as bringing UCBs under the RBI's purview through the Banking Regulation Amendment Act of 2020, implementing a supervisory action framework as well for the resolution of financial stress, and establishing the National Federation of Urban Cooperative Banks and Credit Societies Limited as an umbrella organization for the UCB sector. However, the dual regulation of UCBs with the RBI overseeing banking functions under the Banking Regulation Act 1949 and the State or Central Registrar of Cooperative Societies supervising managerial and administrative matters continues to validate the success chart. As the RBI takes action to protect the interest of depositors, the ongoing efforts to strengthen the urban cooperative banking sector will be crucial in ensuring its stability and resilience. Ahead in the news, India adds record 18 gigawatts renewable energy capacity in financial year 24. India has achieved a remarkable milestone in the renewable energy sector, adding a record 18 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity in the fiscal year 2024. This impressive increase from the previous year was primarily driven by a surge in solar installations, which reached 12.78 gigawatts and the addition of 2.27 gigawatts of wind energy. Delving deeper into the numbers, India's installed RE capacity has grown significantly from 76.37 gigawatts in 2014 to an impressive 178.98 gigawatts as of October 2023, an increase of around 2.34 times. This remarkable progress aligns with India's ambitious goals of reaching a non-fossil fuel energy capacity of 500 gigawatts by 2030 and fulfilling at least half of its energy requirements through renewable sources by the same year. To facilitate this remarkable growth, the Indian government has implemented a range of initiatives and policies. The establishment of ultra-mega renewable energy parks, which provide land and transmission to RE developers on a plug-and-play basis, has been a game-changer. Additionally, schemes such as PM Kusum, the PLI scheme under National Programme on High-Efficiency Solar PV Modules, and the National Bioenergy Programme have further bolstered the country's renewable energy journey. Furthermore, the government has also promoted the renewable energy through Green Energy Open Access Rules 2022 and Wind Solar Hybrid Policy 2018. However, the road to a sustainable energy future is not without its challenges. The variability and unpredictability of renewable sources, high cost, the need to develop new infrastructure, the poor financial condition of power distribution companies, transmission and grid integration issues, as well as the unequal geographical adoption of renewables are all hurdles that India must overcome. Despite these challenges, the number speaks for themselves. India's renewable energy mix consists of 45.15 gigawatts of wind power, 75.57 gigawatts of solar power, 10.2 gigawatts of biomass or cogeneration, 4.99 gigawatts of small hydropower, 0.58 gigawatts of waste to energy and a significant 46.92 gigawatts of large hydropower, accounting for an impressive 41.4% of India's total energy mix. This remarkable progress in renewable energy deployment is a testament to India's commitment to a sustainable future as the country continues to forge ahead. It is poised to solidify its position as a global leader in the clean energy revolution, paving the way for a brighter, more sustainable tomorrow. Moving on to the next news, Gujarat High Court sought details on regulations around crowdfunding. The Gujarat High Court's recent move has shown a spotlight on this emerging mode of fundraising, which is rapidly gaining traction across the country. Crowdfunding, in a sense, is the solicitation of funds, often small amounts, from multiple investors through web-based platforms or social networking sites for specific projects, business ventures or social causes. This innovative approach to fundraising stands in contrast to the traditional method of seeking larger sums from a limited set of sources. 
The regulation of crowdfunding in India falls under the purview of the Securities and Exchange Board of India, which has laid down guidelines to govern these nascent industries. These guidelines stipulate that only accredited investors, including companies incorporated under the Companies Act 2013 with a minimum net worth of Rs 20 crore, high net worth individuals with a minimum net worth of Rs 2 crore, and eligible retail investors with a minimum annual gross income of Rs 10 lakhs are permitted to invest. The types of crowdfunding activities can be broadly categorized into two groups. Community crowdfunding, which includes social lending, donation crowdfunding, and reward crowdfunding. And financial return crowdfunding, which encompasses peer-to-peer -peer lending and equity crowdfunding. The benefits of crowdfunding are manifold. It promotes funding for new ideas and encourages startups, increases the flow of credit to small and medium enterprises, facilitates the raising of funds during natural calamities, and even arranges money for those unable to afford expenses for diseases like cancer. However, the risks associated with crowdfunding cannot be overlooked. The primary concern is that retail investors may not be able to understand the inherent risks involved in investing in startups and may be unable to bear the potential loss of their investments. Additionally, the possibility of genuine websites being used by fraudsters and the lack of monitoring of web-based platforms pose serious challenges, including the risk of terror financing and money laundering. As the Gujarat High Court delves deeper into the regulatory framework surrounding crowdfunding, it is crucial that a balanced approach is adopted, one that fosters innovation and entrepreneurship while also safeguarding the interests of investors and broader financial ecosystem. In another news, space weather behind unprecedented loss of 38 Starlink satellites, says study by Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Kolkata. The study found that space weather conditions, satellites operating in high-density low-Earth orbit and enhanced drag due to orientation changes of satellites are the primary contributors to satellite loss. Let us first explore about Starlink. Starlink is a constellation of satellites in LEO providing global internet coverage, particularly for remote regions. It plans to eventually have as many as 42,000 satellites orbiting at an altitude of around 550 kilometers, offering reduced latency and increased bandwidth compared to traditional satellite internet services. Now let's understand about space weather. Space weather, the environment around Earth and the other celestial bodies is largely controlled by the sun's activities. It is influenced by solar flares, which are sudden and intense explosions of energy on the sun's surface, which is often associated with sunspots. Other influence is of coronal mass ejections, which are large expulsions of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona. These space weather events can have significant impacts on Earth, including radio blackouts in which electromagnetic energy released in flares disrupts radio signals in Earth's upper atmosphere impacting navigation system. Another is geomagnetic storms, that is, major disturbances in Earth's magnetic field that can affect power grids, pipelines and railways. Also, solar radiation storms which are fast-moving charged particles from Sun can permeate magnetosphere and can also endanger astronauts and spacecraft or satellites or the aircraft. The study's findings are particularly relevant as the private sector continues to ramp up efforts to provide global internet coverage through satellite constellations such as SpaceX and American space startup's Starlink project. In our next news, study says acidification may strip Indian soils of 3.3 billion tons of essential carbon. According to the study, over 30% of cultivable land in India is set to carry acidic soil, which can significantly impact plant growth and overall agricultural productivity. Acidic soils are defined as those with a pH value of less than 5.5. This acidity can lead to the loss of soil inorganic carbon or SIC from the topsoil. SIC includes mineral forms of carbon such as calcium carbonate, which are produced through the weathering of parent material or the reaction of soil minerals with atmospheric carbon dioxide. The process of soil acidification where the soil pH decreases over time is being accelerated by several factors. These include the leaching of nitrogen released from ammonium-based fertilizers, the release of organic acids from decomposing organic residues, 
and the release of carbon dioxide into the soil by plant roots during active growth stages which can form carbonic acid. The impacts of this soil acidification can be far-reaching. The loss of SIC, which is mostly carbonate, can lead to the dissolution of carbonates, either releasing them as carbon dioxide gas or directly into the water. Additionally, the acidic conditions can be detrimental to soil microbes as bacteria cannot survive in acidic conditions. Other factor is, when soil pH drops, aluminium becomes soluble and its amount in soil solution increases, which is toxic to roots of sensitive plant species. Other impacts of soil acidification include the rise of pathogenic fungi and decreased nutrient availability, further increasing the challenges facing India's agricultural sector. Furthermore, to manage acid soils, we can incorporate lime, gypsum or dolomite into upper cultivable soil layer. Also, using industrial byproducts such as press mud from sugarcane industry, basic slags from iron and steel industries, flu dust from cement plants can also be helpful. Lastly, growing acid-tolerant crops like sugarcane and bananas would generate positive results. As the country continues to grapple with the need to feed a growing population, understanding and addressing the issue of soil acidification will be crucial to ensuring the long-term sustainability and productivity of India's cultivable lands. In today's personality in news, we will discuss Kandukuri Virasalingam. Remembered on his birth anniversary, he was born in Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh. He was a social reformer and a nationalist, considered as father of Telugu Renaissance movement. Let's discuss his contributions. He worked for upliftment of Harijans, remarriage of widows and other social causes. He started a girls' school in Dhaulaiswaram and is responsible for construction of a temple known as Brahmo Mandir and Hitakarini school in Andhra Pradesh. His novel, Rajasekhara Charitramu, is considered to be the first novel in Telugu literature. He also started Viveka Vardhini Journal. Throughout his life, he depicted values of compassion, justice, courage, humanism and more. As we conclude today's main news, let's have a look at some quick updates. Exercise Dust Lake is a joint military exercise between Indian and Uzbekistan Army which is conducted every year. Cotton farmers in North India may shift to paddy, maize and guar due to severe pink ballworm infestation. Pink ballworm is a disease that is common in cotton crops. Its larvae burrow into developing fruits of cotton plants and its damage affects both weight and quality of harvested balls. The flow of Jiadal River is being disrupted due to the climate change. It is a north bank tributary of Brahmaputra. It originates in the lower Himalayan ranges in Arunachal Pradesh and flows through Assam and meets Brahmaputra near Majuli Island. Water levels have dropped to 13% of its capacity in Lake Kariba due to El Nino-induced rot. El Nino is a climate pattern categorized by unusual warming of surface waters in the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Grace Lender Loris has been rescued in North Goa. Grace Lender Loris is found in India and Sri Lanka. Its natural habitat is the tropical rainforest, scrub forest, semi-evergreen forest and swamps. They are nocturnal animals and currently they are facing threats of habitat loss and electrocution on power lines. The World Chagas Disease Day was observed by World Health Organization on April 14th. Chagas disease is a life-threatening illness caused by a protozoan parasite called the Trypanosoma cruzi. It is found mainly in Latin American countries where it is mostly vector-borne. Nigeria became the first country in the world to introduce men 5 cv vaccine recommended by the World Health Organization. It offers protection against five strains of meningococcus bacteria in a single shot. Meningococcal HCWY vaccine is one that is available in India. Assam celebrates Rongali Bihu. Rongali Bihu or Bohag Bihu is celebrated in the middle of April as it marks the beginning of Assamese New Year and onset of spring. It is a seven-day festival where first day is called Guru Bihu followed by Manu Bihu, Gosai Bihu. Before we sign off, let's challenge your understanding in today's installment of Test Your Knowledge.
We appreciate your company. We hope you found this episode of News Today engaging. For the solution to today's quiz and to access the PDF version of News Today, remember to visit the provided links in the description.